Hello guys and welcome back. Today we're going to have an honest talk about David Reinbacher, the Habs fifth overall pick back in the 2023 NHL draft, who was recently called up to the AHL level and will be making his debut with the Laval Rockets soon. And today we're going to be delving deep into the expectations for Ryan Bucker, not just in the AHL, but in the NHL and with the Habs in the future. Also talking about how my expectations and how his game has evolved over the past year since he was drafted in 2023, as well as just talking about how good Ryan Bucker could become at the next level. Make sure you watch till the end for all the analysis today and hit that subscribe button if you're new for more hockey and Habs content just like this all throughout the year. Now, before we get into the deep dive, let's first talk about today's sponsor, Embet US. Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. If you don't already, Bet US is the best place to make daily NHL and sports bets on every single sport. I mean, right now we got March Madness. If you want to make some bets on that, you can also do daily NHL picks. You can pick Stanley Cup winners, whatever you want to do there. You can even bet on the Laval Rocket or any AHL team, whatever you want to bet on, BetUS has you covered. Now is the best time to get started with BetUS. Just go in the description, click on the link, and sign up there. And on your first two deposits, use code JOIN125, and you'll get a 125% sign-up bonus up to 2500 And we also got an exclusive offer for you guys, too. If you DM me at Nathan Gravitay on Twitter and DM me your screenshot of just opening your BetUS account, we'll give you 25 bucks to do whatever you want with. 25 free bucks there in BetUS. One heck of an offer there. And, of course, with that considered in both the U.S. and Canada, you'll get 24 hour customer service, 24 hour payouts as well. So make sure you get started with BetUS today. And thank you so much to BetUS for sponsoring today's video. Now let's start getting into the David Reinbacher deep dive. And to say that this season has been a difficult one for him would be a pretty big understatement. After being drafted fifth overall by the Montreal Canadiens, David Reinbacher, of all the expectations, came into training camp and looked pretty solid. Also got a little bit of a taste in the preseason and looked pretty good there too. Now, it wasn't good enough to win a roster spot and he would get sent back down to Switzerland in the NL, but that wasn't a problem whatsoever. He was 18 years old and I think for Montreal, no matter what he showed, he should have still been down in either the AHL or Switzerland to get some more development, to get even more reps and just get a lot more accustomed to the pro level and playing bigger minutes. But even though Ryan Bacher would be sent down for another development year, something that we all wanted to see, that patience with Montreal's system, there would become a massive problem. And that was his team in the National League. EHC was an okay team in his draft year. They would end up making the playoff qualifier. Nothing special, but around middle of the pack in Switzerland. This year, though, the team was an absolute disaster and was scathing off relegation. When you look at the NL standings this year, you see in 52 games, EHC Clawton had 12 regulation wins, 29 regulation losses, 5 overtime wins, and 6 overtime losses. And in terms of goals against, Clawton as well comes in last place. And in what should have been a developmental year for David Reinbacher became really survival. He was thrust into an even bigger role of Clawton, thrust into even more responsibility, not just trying to develop himself, but to also save a franchise from the depths of a European league. This is not something that a younger player, especially a younger D, should be having to be tasked with. But with David Reinbacher, it was a part of the equation. It was a part of what, how he was playing, where he was playing in the lineup. And for them, it was really all they could muster. The defense was absolutely brutal. And Reinbacher was, throughout the entire season, just thrown to the wolves. And being thrust into about the worst developmental situation possible, Reinbacher was never going to have a successful year. Almost nobody would have had a successful year in Cotton's system with the team that they had. It was a straight disaster. Still, though, all things considered, I think Reinbacher did about as good as he could have done. I don't think he was absolutely insane or anything. And again, the stats aren't going to be jumping out at you. In 35 games in the NL, he had one goal, one empty net goal, 10 assists, 11 points, and was a minus 15. Still, though, in this disastrous season, Reinbacher found himself 12th in team scoring. And if you're concerned about the point totals, you could absolutely be that, but the power play was absolutely wonky as well. They were playing Reinbacher in a lot of weird situations. And you also just look at the forwards he's had to work with. There was only five players on the team that had more than 20 points in 50 games. Nobody even hit the 30 point mark in 52 games. I don't even know how that was possible. 
So not only were they just horrible defensively around him, also the offense wasn't doing anything whatsoever. And for Reinbacher, again, it's hard to have confidence. It's hard to have consistency in that type of environment. And he just didn't. But after Clotten's season would inevitably come to a close early, we finally got the news that we have been waiting for. David Reinbacher being officially assigned to the Laval Rocket, where he probably should have just been in the first place. And this was amazing news, and really by the end of the season, it was kind of a great thing just how bad they were that they didn't even get a taste in the playoffs so that Reinbacher could be assigned as quick as possible, and boy, did he need it. Plus, we also got a good clip about Reinbacher and just how excited he is to be in Laval. I mean, they're normal conversations. They're happy to have me here, uh, to develop, develop uh, here. Uh, I'm excited too, to be here with all the guys maybe try to make the playoffs. I mean, it's completely different. Uh, in Switzerland, there are probably more veterans in the team than here. Uh, we're a really young team. Yeah, just enjoy, learn from, from every player here and from the coaches, get all the information into me and uh, just have fun. And that's what you want to hear, right? Especially for a younger player coming into a new system. I'm sure that Reinbacher will take just being on any team compared to Clotten, but still, Laval is going to be a really interesting place for him, especially considering the position and the defenseman they already have. It'll be a lot more of a sheltered role for Reinbacher, which I'm sure he has a sigh of relief having after the responsibility he was thrust into in the NL but also considering Laval's playoff run too it could be a pretty big boost for him if you don't know Laval is in the North Division in the AHL and the top five teams in the North all make the playoffs and right now they're kind of in a battle between Toronto and Belleville they are three points behind both Belleville and Toronto for those number four and number five spots so it's pretty close here and down the stretch Ryan Bacher could be a really valuable asset for this Laval team you get a little bit of a projected defense here from abs coverage we don't know necessarily where Ryan Bacher will play yet but I would probably see expect him to be behind Baron and Mayu and that right side 2d that are probably better than him at this stage but to me that's almost a good thing i want to see reinbacher have some competition i want to see him have a more sheltered role that probably fits his style better at this stage and i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing for reinbacher getting those shelter minutes because he hasn't gotten them for a very long time and especially against AHL competition. I think the Swiss League is actually pretty underrated, and that's the reason why I think Reinbacher struggled quite a bit. But I think that jump to the AHL, I'd much rather see him getting sheltered AHL minutes than getting thrown to the wolves in the Swiss League every single night. And I think it'll do him a lot of wonders, especially getting, hopefully, some playoff reps as well. And then we got official confirmation from the Rocket that David Reinbacher will be making his debut against Belleville, a big divisional opponent there as well. So Reinbacher finally getting some reps in the AHL shell and we'll finally be getting a good taste of it now let's talk about what to expect in Reinbacher's game and, and I guess it depends on how much Laval is planning to use him if he is in more of a sheltered role or is he if he is actually thrown to the wolves in the end but to me Reinbacher I think will be pretty good in the AHL I don't think he's going to overwhelm anybody as of right now but he's a 19 year old D he doesn't have to to me he's a player that I've always maybe had lower expectations on compared to most but he's a player that if he were to play good in the AHL already it would be a massive success again he's 19 years old and coming off a disastrous stint in the NL. If he can stabilize himself with Laval, get accustomed to that system, and finally be able to produce, then to me, that's all you could ask for. Just a reminder for a lot of you guys, in last year's draft rankings, I had David Reinbacher ranked 16th, and that's not, to me, a, a hate against David Reinbacher. I don't hate him whatsoever. At that point, I still think he's one of the better prospects in the 2023 draft, and I think will be a top 4D. It was just about the expectations for me. He was a guy at fifth overall that I do think was a bit of a reach, but that's okay. I think he's still a guy that can eat minutes on the next level, can skate like the wind, can have a great transitional ability, and on the rush, bring some great passing ability too, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Although I don't think he was the best defenseman in the draft, he's still a guy that I think could be a great top 4D and for Montreal, a great top 4D in the future. And we go back to the 2023 draft and the top defenseman in the class to me is Simishev and Reinbacher. These guys needed a lot more patience than maybe top D in years prior. To me, especially in Reinbacher's case, he needed, I would say, about three years or so to really gel, to really get accustomed to the North American pro level as well, to be really important in Laval's system. And I think that patience was really required to see him thrive at 
at the next level for Montreal. And so far, give kudos to Montreal's staff. We have seen them have that patience, even sending him down to a poor situation in the NL, bringing him up to the AHL level. They haven't rushed him whatsoever, and to me, that is the most important thing. And for me, if I was to go back into the 2023 draft, I would probably have Ryan Bach around the same range, maybe slightly higher, just because I think there might be maybe a little bit more potential than maybe I was giving Ryan Bacher credit for back then. But this is still a guy that I could see being a great minutes eater at the next level. Again, a guy that can skate so incredibly well. And for Montreal, that was an important piece to add. Their defense looks incredibly interesting for the future. And you could have Lane Hudson as the offensive guy with Ryan Bacher protecting him. And I think that pair could be really interesting together if they were to go that direction. There's a lot of options for Montreal's defense in the future. That's just because they've drafted so many. But I do think Ryan Bacher has the potential to be the best among them overall. With Lane Hudson, I think, still having some defensive inefficiencies, Ryan Bacher could cover for that and could be what Montreal needs on their defense in a few years' time. Here's the thing. I don't think Ryan Bacher is going to save the defense. I don't think he's going to be this number one Victor Hedman type. To me, the Victor Hedman thing gets thrown around way too friggin' much. There's one Victor Hedman, and there's not going to be that many replicas. And in David Ryan Bacher's case, I think he'll be a good, at times, great D-man. But again, it's about that potential for me is why I maybe ranked him a little bit lower. I didn't quite see him at that number one D level, but we'll see. There is still a lot of time here for Ryan Bacher to improve. And like we talked about as well, if you're already Slavkowski in the couple videos we made about him over the past couple of months this development system with Montreal has really gotten the most out of him recently and has turned his outlook on its head looking so much better than it used to so maybe they're able to do the same thing with Reinbacher now and I would love to see it. I would love to see him prove me wrong because Ryan Bacher seems like an incredible kid. Seems like a guy that is just so driven and, and, and so ready to get better and better. And that's what you want to see in younger players. That's what you want to see in teenagers coming into your system. We saw that with Slavkowski already. And hopefully Ryan Bacher follows in line there. To be the number one person you cannot doubt to develop younger players right now is Marty St. Louis. And maybe he can sprinkle his magic touch on Ryan Bacher too. That's the big hope here. And I've seen so many people with just how rough his season in Clinton was, calling him a bust, labeling as him as a guy that will never reach the potential that Montreal puts on him. And I think that is incredibly premature. He was never a guy that, to me, was not going to be an NHLer. He was always going to have these great pro traits and the great skating floor to be able to be an NHL guy. To me, the questions was just about how much of an NHL or how good of an NHLer he will be. And the jury is still out on that. Obviously, he's not made his NHL debut, but the people calling him a buzz just because he's had a bad NL season. You got to consider the context here, man. It's necessary. And we can have the discussions over Reinbacher maybe being a reach, perhaps. I mean, technically in my rankings, he was, and I would prefer a few players here and there, like a Zach Benson, perhaps. But to me, I can absolutely see why Montreal is, is drafting a player like that fifth overall. You can see where they're coming from. And sure, I might have preferred Matthew Michkov, but at the same time for Montreal, it seemed like that was never going to be the reality. That was never going to be in their cards. And Reinbacher was always going to be the pick. And in that aspect... They haven't had anything proven wrong yet. Reinbacher still hasn't even made the NHL, and we have to wait. We have to be patient here. Labeling him a bust right now, you just can't do that, man. And especially in Reinbacher's case, who I think has a pretty big floor. I think his floor is honestly a solid NHL D, and I think there's potential for him to get better than that. To me, he's the last player that could be in the bust category. A reach, possibly. We could have that discussion but a bust, it just doesn't make sense. And for Reinbacher, as long as he learns, as long as he gets better at the AHL level, gets accustomed to the pro level in North America, and really gets just comfortable in the situation in Montreal system, that to me is a resounding success. Again, the D is still 19 years old, man. And even though he was one of the older players in that 2023 draft, I think this is exactly where he should be at this point. Don't rush Reinbacher. Let him cook. Let him fester in the AHL level. Put him in the AHL for next year as well. And just let him grow into the prospect that he should be. But that is going to be it for today's talk about David Reinbacher. I want to know in the comments down below, what are your expectations for him? How good do you think he will be with Laval? How good do you think he will be for Montreal in the future? Let us know down below. Do you see him as more of a top four, a top two D? I'd love to know all your thoughts down below. Do you think he could be a number one D as well? Of course, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell if you guys enjoy the deep dives and want to see more like it. And of course, share the video with all the hockey, all the Habs fans you guys know online. And click on this card for all of my hockey prospects talk right in one playlist. My name is Nathan, and I will see you in the next one. Have a great hockey day, and goodbye.